What's up you guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a mock-up thumbnail image with a play button on it. Now we're gonna go through a lot of different designs, so it's kinda like a bunch of mini tutorials all in a row. So stick around, there's lots of different things to learn and I hope you guys enjoy this one. Once you have Photoshop opened, let's start a new document. You can either hit the Create New button if you see that or go up to File, New. Now this document, I wanna start with a 1920 by 1080 document and that's in pixels. Most of the time, these type of mocks up are in the digital space. Uh, but if you need some other size, go ahead and create it to your size. If you're going for print, 300 DPI works. If you're digital, it, that doesn't even matter. All right, and I do want RGB color mode and then the rest of this we can just leave as the default. Hit create and we're gonna open up a new document. I'm gonna zoom out with command or control minus so we can see the whole thing. So if we look at our layers panel, I'm gonna kind of adjust these guys over here. Our layers panel just has the background layer in it. So we wanna pull in an image. Most play button type thumbnails have an image. So I'm gonna go up to file, down to place embedded. In my opinion, this is the best way to pull in an image. I'm gonna to navigate to my image. This one is by Rob By from unsplash.com. I'm gonna place this in here. Now this image isn't formatted for this document size, so it's gonna place it in there until it reaches the boundary. And notice it hit the top, so it just sizes it so that it places it in there from top to bottom, but I don't have it scaled out from to the left and right yet. So I can grab this corner and start to skew it. Just kidding, don't skew it like that, but at least hold shift while you do that. And if you wanna be super cool, hold option or alt and you'll scale from the center while you're holding shift as well. So I'm just gonna scale this out until it covers my entire width of my document. Once I get there, I can either double click or hit enter, I usually hit enter, and it's gonna commit that change. So here we go, we have a little bit of a cityscape. And I can drag this up and down, make sure to hold shift so that it keeps it in line. Notice how we can see the bottom of the image, and if we drag it too far down, we can see the top of the image. So now you know what your boundaries are, depending on your image. I'm gonna sit it right in here-ish for this thumbnail tutorial. So we've got the photo in here. What we need to do next is add a play button. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle tool, hold and drag down to the polygon tool and let go and that grabs that polygon tool. I'm just gonna click on my canvas and it's gonna open up a little create polygon dialog box. Uh, width 100, height 100, that doesn't matter too much. Number of sides matters because I wanna create a triangle. So three sides is what I want and I'm gonna hit okay. And that created a triangle with whatever the fill color was. I can change that fill up here in the properties. So obviously I wanna to go to a white fill with that triangle, with that play button. And then I can click off. Now we have a white triangle out here. What I can do with the move tool is hit command or control T and that's gonna free transform that layer as long as that layer is selected. So we can scale this up and down just like we scaled the image. So I'm gonna hold shift and option to sort of scale it up a little bit. And I would say a good rule of thumb is one fifth of the height of your image. So if I scale this thing up to be about right in here, that's a pretty decent sort of arbitrary size. We'll hit enter on that and there's our triangle. Now I can select all with command or control A. You can also go up to select all right there. Once we have this big selection and we have our polygon or our triangle play button selected, we can use the navigation tools up here as long as the move tool is selected. I'm gonna hit the horizontal and vertical alignment to get that play button right in the center. And I'm gonna put quotations around that because it's not exactly perfectly in the center visually, but it is mathematically, and we'll adjust that later. Now I can hit Command D or Control D to deselect all. Once again, that's up here under uh, the select menu. And from here, we need to make some adjustments. So obviously we cannot see the play button, so that's a problem. We need to adjust either the image or the play button or both so that our play button pops out from the background. So I'm gonna adjust the image first. I think that we can crush the blacks a little bit, which is to introduce some gray into the image. So I have this image selected. I'm gonna to go to adjustments. That's under window adjustments. And we're gonna create an adjustment layer and it's going to be a curves adjustment layer. Now don't be afraid of curves. They're not gonna bite you, they're okay. So I'm gonna drag this down so we can see the actual dialogue here. So we have an input and an output. Basically, 
the blackest black is showing up as black, the whitest white is showing up as white. If I drag this up, notice how the photo begins to get grayer. So the black on the edges of the photo begins to turn into more of a gray tone. That's because I'm taking the black input and saying, okay, anything that's this dark, I want you to be a little bit lighter. So that's the way we can adjust curves. And now I can do the same thing. I can start to take some of the midtones down a little bit to introduce a little bit more darkness into the photo. The whitest white, maybe I don't want that to be a pure white. Maybe I want to drag that down a little bit. See how our play button is beginning to show up. That's good. And I don't want to drag it down too much. I want that sky to be sort of blown. I want people to know that sky is really white up there, overcast day. So this type of curve adjustment would work just fine for this photo kind of gives it a little bit more of that um, retro feel a little bit with those blacks. Here I can turn the layer on and off to show you the difference. So this was before, now I turn the curves on, and this is after. We kind of edited that photo a little bit. Now with this polygon, and we can double click that name and, and call him play button so we remember that's the play button. What we can do to further increase the uh, the sort of depth here is add a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to double click into this blank space here and that's going to open up layer styles. In these layer styles we have lots of different layer styles including drop shadow. And if I click on that drop shadow it's going to add it. And as long as I have this preview button checked I'm going to be able to see the changes out here. Now this drop shadow, the goal of this drop shadow is for someone looking at this image to not know that there's a drop shadow on it. You want it to be subtle enough that they see the play button standing out, but they don't know that it's because of a drop shadow. So for instance, if I drag this opacity up, you'll see that that shadow begins to show even more and more. And let's go ahead and drag this down to some a little bit closer to the defaults. We're gonna change the angle to maybe 130-ish, 130 right there. So it's sort of coming down this way. Now you can scale or yeah, scale the distance in and out just like this. You can also click and drag out here to sort of move this drop shadow around. Now this drop shadow is currently way, way, way overpowering, right? We don't want it like that. We wanna pull this opacity way back and even go to zero and then just sort of pop it out a little bit. You see how there's a little bit of a difference there even at 10% opacity. Then we can adjust the size a little bit. You can see it a little bit too much there, so we want to adjust the size so it's a little bit feathered and maybe bring the distance back some. So there's our drop shadow. We can turn it on and off with this little checkbox here just to check and see what it's like off and then on. And you could even pull that opacity back, maybe even to 8%. So we are just barely adding a hint of drop shadow. I can turn it on and off in the effects uh, drop down here. Same thing, just a tiny little bit of a drop shadow so that that play button pops out from that background a little bit more. So here you go, I can zoom out a little bit so we can see it. Looks pretty decent. Now what we can do is add an overall darkness to this so we have that curves adjustment, kinda like where that's at. I'm gonna leave it. So I'm gonna go to my uh, image layer here. I click on it so that when I add an adjustment layer it just adds it right above that image layer. So I'm gonna add an adjustment. You could add several things. We could look at levels, brightness, contrast, even exposure. We'll just do a quick, uh, or even hue and saturation can do lightness and darkness, so we'll open that up a little bit. And in here, in hue and saturation, we have a lightness, and we can bring that up and down on our image to sort of darken it or lighten it. So if we darkened it a little bit more, notice how that play button stands out even more. So all of these little tweaks help that play button stand out. What if we want this guy to be black and white instead of color? So this is our generic little color uh, thumbnail, right? Our mock-up. So if we want to turn it to black and white, and I think this, by the way, is a little bit too dark, just so you know. I would turn that up just a little bit. I don't mind, I don't mind where it's at, at maybe a negative four on that. Uh, but anyway, if we want this to be black and white, let's go to a black and white style thumbnail. We're going to go to adjustments again. There's all sorts of adjustments. There's one right here called black and white. As soon as we add that, it turns the photo black and white. And now you can add other adjustments here. For instance, we could add a uh, brightness and contrast adjustment. And once we do that, we could crank the contrast because black and white images can really have a lot of contrast. We can drop the brightness some. And just a small adjustment there, if we hide that layer and show it, helps that play button pop out from the background, and there we go, we have a black and white 
uh, play button, mock-up. Okay, what if we want an overlay? Well, let's add right underneath all this stuff I'm adding underneath the play button, by the way. I'm going to add a rectangle to our entire canvas here. And I'm going to start outside the canvas, click and drag and add him uh, and make sure he's big enough to cover the entire canvas. There he is, completely saturating the entire canvas. We can adjust our fill up here to whatever color. I'm going to leave it at this color because what I'm going to do, since we turned it black and white, that's probably key for when you're doing a color overlay is to go ahead and turn the photo black and white and then add the color. But with this rectangle here, I can change his blending mode to multiply. And once I do that, it's going to multiply through and show in the light areas and then kind of work its way out from there. So it's, it's knocking out what, uh, where the black is, it's sort of knocking out the color, and then where the white is, it's showing the color. So And then everything grays in between. So here's a bit of a color overlay. That's kind of nice. What else could I do with this? Well, we could add a, how about we add like an outline to the entire image? Uh, we can click on our canvas with that rectangle tool. Add a rectangle that is 1920 by 1080. That's the size of our canvas. So we're going to hit OK on that. And it added this rectangle sort of arbitrary space somewhere put out there. OK, well, I need to center it up. So I'm going to hit Command A or Control A. Let's select all. And then my, my move tools aren't, or my alignment tools aren't up here. I need to click on the move tool to find those. Align center, boom, boom. Command or Control D to deselect. Now let's change this to no fill and let's add a stroke. I'm going to add an orange stroke to this. Check that out. We have an outline around this entire image now as well. And with this outline, there's some stroke options here in our live shape properties. The stroke drop down here changes whether it's inside the bounding box of our rectangle, in the center, or on the outside. The inside actually works really well because as we build up the width of our uh, rectangle, the pixels here, so if I shift arrow that up to say 50, it's going to build towards the inside, which is very helpful. That's why we made it the size of our document. This rectangle is 1920 by 1080 for a reason. So I'm going to back that back out to like 20. So there we go. We have a little outlined. Uh, Actually, I liked it it's sitting at like 10 or 15, so I'm going to do 15. I kind of like that thin border with that really uh, pop, that, that strong pop of orange. we got the blue overlay and then the play button. Now, one thing you can do, once you start to make all of these tweaks, you may not have to have that drop shadow anymore. I could get rid of that drop shadow now to make this a lot flatter of a thumbnail. So there you go. What do you think, you guys? We did a lot of different adjustments to this. We went through a lot of different styles of this thumbnail. Uh, I actually have two more things I want to do. Just quick thoughts that I had. First off, that play button. Remember I said it wasn't visually in the center. So let's bring out a guide into the very center, a vertical guide into the very center of this. We're going to go up to View, down to New Guide. And this is going to pop up in the New Guide dialog box that uh, asks us actually where or do you want to place this guide? And I'm going to place this right in the center. Let's see, 1920 divided by 2 is like 960. So I'm going to put 960 in there, hit OK, and that places the guide right in the center. Notice how there's a little bit more of this triangle to the left than there is to the right. Mathematically, yeah, it's in the center. But visually speaking, the volume of that triangle is a little out of balance. So I'm going to move that play button over. As long as I have it selected and the move tool selected, I'm going to hold shift and just click it to the right. That's a shift arrow right, and maybe one, and then maybe just some short little arrows, like one, two, three, four, five, something like that, or even I could go back, one, two, three, four, five, you know, uh, kind of right in there. Just, just shifting it a little bit so it's visually in the center is very helpful. The last thing I might do here is on that rectangle that is the, uh, the border, you could always multiply that as well. And that doesn't work very well at all. But you might be able to find a different type of, there you go, so screen would be a good one instead of multiply. 
and that will show through. Notice up here, it shows through a little bit of the bottom image, and then around the edge here, it's a little bit darker, but it gives it a little, I think it sits it a little bit more into the image rather than being so much on top. However, if you want that border super on top of the image, you could always go back to that normal. And then you can always change the color. So if we wanted that border just to be, just to be black, we could select a black. And then we have a black border on this image. Okay, so what if I need this to be a different size? What if I need it to be only like 600 pixels wide for an email? Well, I go up to image, down to image size. Now this shows us in inches, and I'm gonna switch that to pixels. Okay, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Because this is linked, I can change the width to 600. That would be what I, my like standard email width size is 600, and it's gonna keep the height in res or respective to the width. So this ratio is the same as that 16 by nine ratio, that 1920 by 1080 size. So 600 by 338, okay, hit okay, and that's gonna scale it down, and now I can save this out as a JPEG uh, graphic by going to File, Save, and then you can select JPEG from the drop-down menu there, uh, and I can send it off to the marketing team to put into their emails. So that's, uh, that's, I guess that's my whole process sort of of developing different thumbnails. Obviously, <clears throat> obviously we got into some of the creative stuff here, like, beyond just adding the play button. But uh, I think that's okay. I think that I wanted to just give you guys like what I kind of go through when I'm creating play buttons and stuff and uh, let you run with it and give you as much information as I can. Hopefully you guys uh, learned something in this tutorial. Don't forget to like this video if you liked this video. Uh, subscribe for more tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.